couple things. One, I am not a tech bro, so let's get that clear. I'm right. not a fan of Silicon Valley. Two, um, I agree with you. The rollback in 2018 was a mistake. And, it, you know, there's the entire economy of the United States of America is built on trust in our institution, in our legal institutions, and in our banks. The minute insured or uninsured people feel and companies feel they can't trust our banks, we lose our reserve, our place as the reserve currency. We lose our place as the destination for commerce. But three, and here's kind of the linchpin of the whole thing. In every business, big bank, little bank, podcast companies, you name it, uh, every Every CEO makes decisions, right? And those decisions are based in probability where they'll say, you know, the chances of this happening are big or small. And I think what happened for the CEO at um, Silicon Valley Bank was, I think they probably thought to themselves along with their board, you know, we do have a risk with all these uninsured accounts, but it's only really a risk if there's a run on the bank. And there's only really a risk if it's a really big run. And the chances of, $42 billion being withdrawn in six hours are so infinitesimal, you know, and the banking regulations allow us to hold these things to maturity anyways. It's probably, you know, such an infinitesimal risk, we can take that risk. The problem was that that one in a billion thing happened. And mm -hmm. when there was a bank run and it was $42 billion in six hours, that just collapsed everything and that created the problem we saw. Could the Silicon Valley Bank's demise could have been prevented? How Silicon Valley Bank's risky investments led to its demise? Sheila Baer, former FDIC chair, and Mark Cuban, entrepreneur and multi-hyphenate. Discuss where the regulation for these banks was, why we don't bail out our citizens like we do our businesses, and what's next for banks with similar investment strategies to Silicon Valley Bank. Richard Hart, a second expert in the field, will talk about the state of the cryptocurrency market today. Cryptocurrency trading, says Richard, is a better bet than equities or even established companies. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Sheila Bear share his recent thoughts regarding the collapse of Silicon Valley banks? They haven't said that. They, they said at least for those two banks, they're going to cover right. all the uninsured deposits. But, but you're right. I mean, you do it for two. If there's really a problem with deposit runs, just helping two isn't going to take care of the broader system problems. And, and if anything, it could make it worse for the others if you get two backstop, but others are out there. But I assume if you backstop, if help. you backstop these two, uh -huh. it's, you're going to be hard pressed to then not backstop regional well, banks that, and, and everything else. Well, that, that's true. We did that and they may need to do that. I, I, I kind of sense that there is a bit of an overreaction here. I think the banking system is basically okay. I think regional banks, community banks basically are okay. There are a few more out there that are having some problems. Uh, they have a lot of uninsured deposits. So, you know, we, as you said, we depo insure deposits up to 250,000. But if you're on ins and you get a perfect, you know, the FDIC has got a perfect record on protecting insurance. So nobody worries about that and they shouldn't mm -hmm. worry about that. But if you rely heavily on uninsured, depending on, you know, how loyal those customers are, that the money could run. So if, you know, if, if we get in a situation there where fear starts driving behavior by uninsured deposits, not necessarily fundamentals about how good the bank is, but fear, right. then they are going to have what's called liquidity failures. If you take all your money out of the bank, they can't make raise cash enough to make the uh, withdrawal request, then you're going to close the bank. It's so, so much self-destructive behavior. But I think that's really the, that could right. be the problem right now. But you're right. They really well, and this bank had, the, uh, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank had, I think, 90% of its deposits were uninsured, which yeah. is an enormously right. high number comparatively. Right. Normally, it's, yes. I guess, 40 to 50%. 
Yeah, uh, and and the and big risk regional offset. banks. That's right. The, the big regional banks had the traditional ones out. This is also a rapid growth company, so it was new. It was tech oriented. It had a volatile, you know. Yeah, so the, the traditional banks, the traditional regional banks out there, they have a, a lot of a, a, a lot of insured deposits. The uninsured they have are institutions that have done business with them for a long time. They, you know, mm-hmm. they do credit lines. They do all sorts of different things for them. So they're they're not going to run. And so I do think uh, people need to keep their their heads on this. But if it starts right. getting out of hand, I do th- the government needs to backstop it all. It, it can't just backstop a couple and think this is going to take care of itself. But if anything, that that could make it worse. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban share his thoughts regarding what's happening now, a days and where we are headed. Some of that I agree with and some I don't. No, you agree with I mean, all of it, Cuban. No Cuban, you agree with all of it. <laughs> you know, there's, there's no question that when things started to go south, the stock price started to crater. So that created a red flag. So people knew something was up. And when that happened, there's no question that every tech company that um, banked with Silicon Valley Bank and had a lot of money there and recognized what was going on, they, you know, they made room underneath their mattresses next to their copy of Atlas Shrug for all the cash they were going to need to take out because you need to save your business first. Right, right. As did you. You asked for your money back, for God's sakes. You, that's, that's no, just, I that's three bank, Shark Tank investments. How everyone knew that Silicon Valley Bank was insolvent in September? Well, uh, you know, I don't know. It's pretty amazing to me they didn't manage their interest rate risk because uh, that's that's pretty basic. <laughs> First of all, they invested in long-term government back uh, bonds mm-hmm. and MBS uh, at just the wrong time, and then didn't hedge the interest rate risk. So I think there was some serious mismanagement here. And as as you uh, know, there's some unusual things about their deposit base, which was not loyal, uh, which, mm-hmm. which I find kind of astonishing. And I agree with you then to come run for a bailout when you help create the problem. And Mark, I would have to disagree with you a little bit. I mean, I think we have $250,000 caps on deposit insurance. Everybody knows that, you know, kids know that. It's at the teller window when they go into the bank with their parents. And we do that because we want some market discipline for uninsured. We want you looking at your bank. We want we want you to be monitoring it and seeing how safe it is. Now, maybe you think that's, you know, that's unrealistic and people don't want to do that. But if that's the case, then let's have a program for uninsured and let's let's charge for it. You know, charge bags fees. That, that, but, we, but we don't have that right now. But yeah, what right happens on. though is there's this thing called cash relief programs, ICS programs that just game the system. Right. Mm-hmm. So they, they do these deals where they'll say, Hey, you can assure up to, you know, a billion dollars, but we're going to take your $250,000 and put it in, you know, hundreds of banks and they'll do deposit swaps. It's just the kludging of the system rather right. than just dealing with the obvious that $250,000 is not enough. And I disagree with Sheila because if you're a small entrepreneur and you have inventory and you have payables and you have, a roll, your account is going to go up over $250,000, even if you're tiny. And then there's downstream risks where you might work with a payroll processor, like has ha- that, like happened with Silicon Valley Bank, where there's one payroll processing company that might deal with thousands, thousands of smaller companies or Etsy um, sellers, as an example, and their accounts are always going to be over $250,000. And someone selling Etsy jewelry, they're not going to know where the money's being out. Instead of putting your money into traditional investments like businesses or stocks, Richard Hart recommends putting all of your money into cryptocurrency. You know, the, these opportunities keep availing themselves. Pulsechain.com is going to come out, you know, hopefully soon. Hex.com is on a 9% dip now. Like, we have these things where you're lucky enough that they dip that you can get an entry. There's some things that never dip. Like, like try and catch a dip on, like, uh, Amazon. I guess you can. But, yeah, but, but if you look bit, at the chart, crazy, if yeah. you look at the chart historically, it is like up and to the right forever. It, mm-hmm. it's like, so why would you, okay, here's the theory. Someone, someone somewhere said that you should diversify and then everyone thought, yeah, that sounds good. But then they never actually put any thought into it. Like if I were to, I could beat you up about this. You I know want to, I, I want to learn something. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Why do you think diversification world has it far worse? The dollar is at all time low value, but other currencies are at 40 year low value versus the dollar. So mm-hmm. those guys got screwed even harder. Yeah, the dollar's pretty strong right now. Actually. Yeah, the euro lost a third of its value yes. over the last 14 years versus Correct. the dollar, and the dollar lost a massive amount of its value mm-hmm. versus the stuff that you want, like versus Big Macs. They, they keep getting more expensive. 
So the song yeah, that the, the, I go to the uh, if you go to the dollar store, everything's two bucks now. Right. The dollar menu at yep. McDonald's, everything's like dollar forty nine. Yeah. It's like yep. what just happened here, yep. guys? One hundred percent, bro. One hundred percent. It's because it, it's not because the stuff went up in price. It's because the dollar is worth nothing now, and we'll continue to do that. They will mm -hmm. continue to devalue that dollar until it's worth nothing. So if you can sit in any type of real asset that they just don't print for fun all the time, mm -hmm. like the dollar, and then convert as needed, then you don't get wrecked holding the dollar. Like if you, if you, if you had a hundred thousand dollars of savings 10 years ago, well, guess what? The interest rate you earned didn't mm -hmm. meet inflation. You lost money saving. Richard Hart offers ideas on how to pace the market after spending your money on skilled guidance. He's not in the same market I'm in. And if he was in this market, I smoke him in, in, in his market. He smoked me. Well, so it's like Warren this. Buffett. Too. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, right? Warren Buffett's tactics are to buy something and never sell it, which mm -hmm. gives you a tax advantage. So if you're, if you're taxed at the corporate rate, I don't remember exactly what it is, but let's say it's 20% mm -hmm. and the, uh, return on investment in stocks to say, let's average 10%. You're making an extra 2% a year by never selling because you, you, you have extra money in the market because you weren't taxed because you mm -hmm. didn't sell. And so if you buy a thing like Coca-Cola that tends to have product market fit, a walled garden, it's, it's not a volatile industry. It's likely to be popular for a very long time. So he buys Gillette, he buys Coca-Cola, he buys things that have McDonald's, Apple, boring. Kind of exactly. He's a traditional. He, the, the Apple thing's new. If there's that anyone that's the exact opposite of Warren Buffett, I think it would be Richard Hart. True. Yeah. In terms of But Apple wasn't even wise. his idea. It was someone else at his company. That Correct. He, you know, he has to. Either was Coca-Cola or McDonald's. Die. He's going to die. And then he has to hand it off to the next guy. Yeah. So the next guy might as well get experience. So it, the issue is like, why do I care about Warren Buffett or the stock market when it only did a 2x in 14 years. Mm -hmm. You had to wait 14 years to get a 2x in the S&P 500. And this is with all-time high inflation, with 0% interest rates, with money printing at the yin-yang. You couldn't have had a better macro environment for stocks to appreciate. And so the S&P 500 in this environment where, you know, if you adjust for inflation, it's not even that good. Like if you adjust for inflation, you didn't get a 2x. And so why would I care about 14 years wait for a 2x when I can get that in a month in crypto? Like Hex just went up 2X in the last month. So do you want to wait 14 years or do you want to wait 30 days? How do you feel about the expert's advice that was presented? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Till next time, Goodbye.